It was 1993. I remember the first time I saw the Parker Fly guitar in a Guitar Player magazine ad. I had been playing guitar for only a few years and I thought it was ultra cool. Way cooler than my Ibanez was. I wanted one for many years, but I was busy raising a family and disposable income was lacking. I finally got my first Parker in 2005. I loved it. I joined the Parker Guitars Forum and I was quite active there. During my time there, I discovered some things that left me dismayed. I never understood why the Parker Fly was apparently so repulsive to guitarists. Guitarists like Keith Richard, who still plays a Fender guitar designed in 1950, would say things like, they're nice guitars, but why do they have to look like a bleeding assault rifle? I would see things online like, I love the Fly, but I couldn't ever play one in my band, and so on. I don't get it. They would rather use a difficult to play and keep in tune 50 plus year old guitar design because of the looks? How come people don't reject all Corvettes that don't follow the 1957 pattern? Innovations welcome with cars, airplanes, computers, cell phones, and just about everything else, but not with guitars? People think the Steinberger and the bizarre looking Klein guitars are cool, but the Fly is a no go. Ken Parker's Fly was a revolutionary electric guitar design. The design form followed the function. The inspiration for the design actually came from Ken's study of the lute. A lute is a very resonant instrument, lightweight but also very strong, with its strength being in the exterior shell. The Fly Deluxe approached its final form around 1985. In these pictures, we can see the guitar, which I understand was used to create the initial CNC data points for the body. Here is another prototype Ken made in 1986. It averaged about 3 8 inches thick, and he envisioned it as being like only the top of an archtop guitar. It was, however, too thin for bulky magnetic pickups, but it was closest to what he really wanted the Fly to be. So why was the Fly Deluxe design so innovative? It was so much so that Ken Parker patented the design. This included the bridge system, the carbon fiber exoskeleton, the method of attaching the frets, and the stainless steel piezo saddles. The body was shaped with a CNC machine. CNC machines are commonplace today, but they were very high tech for the time. It used carbon fiber on the back of the body, which was poplar, and also the neck, which was base wood. These are two woods that are not normally used for guitars in, in this manner. This creates a sort of exoskeleton. The heat activated carbon fiber was applied to the back of the body and neck. Then it was vacuum bagged and baked in a pizza oven set between 250 to 300 degrees until it was cured. The neck joint is unique in the guitar world and is a non-removable quote set neck. The fretboard was also composite with glued on D-shaped stainless steel frets which utilized little tiny glass beads to improve the uh, adhesion between the frets and the, and the fretboard. This also allowed for no high frets or no low frets. This was the result of Parker doing hundreds of fret jobs and thinking there must be a better way to do frets and a much better material for frets that's not so soft. The minimal headstock was so they could balance better and not tip over towards the headstock when it's on your lap. It used a very different kind of vibrato bridge with a flat spring. It had magnetic pickups and piezo pickups. With the push of a button you could use two different amps and simultaneously sound like an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar or you could combine the pickups all to one common output. It utilized spurzel locking tuners, and the frets were very precisely placed, which results in a guitar with a much better than average intonation, and it stays in tune incredibly well. The aluminum alloy bridge was carefully engineered to allow for the most sustain. The nut was made of graphite. Every material chosen was used for its conservation of the energy of the strings. Due to the precise manufacturing, it is also possible to get a very low action with no buzzing frets. The end result of all this is a lively sounding guitar which is very lightweight, resonant, versatile, and it will never ever need a fret job. So why did the Fly fail to find success? Famous guitars can be seen on occasion with a Fly, but they never adopted them. Some of them still play a Fly to this day, such as Adrian Ballou. 
So what happened to Parker Guitars? Ken Parker once said that they were making $10,000 guitars for $2,500. Parker Guitars always seemed to struggle to stay afloat. Despite Ken's vision that they would be popular because they played so well, the concept just didn't fly. <laughs> Guitarists were too hung up on looks and tradition. Ken Parker started his company with Larry Fishman in 1993. After struggling for 10 years and selling about 30,000 guitars, Parker sold his company to Washburn slash U.S. Music Corporation in 2003. For a couple of years, they continued to make the fly more or less the same as it had always been done. Then they introduced the refined fly, which was essentially a cheap inversion of the fly with watered-down electronics and the deletion of the balance wheel that you could see from the exterior. They made some very exotic limited edition models of the fly that had koa bodies, really interesting cool paint, or a literal snakeskin top, and sold them for some really outrageous prices. The, the U.S. Music Corporation era Parkers aren't bad. In 2009, U.S. Music Corporation was bought out by Jam Industries, and a few years later, things really went downhill from there. They started to make changes to the headstock shape, the shape of the upper horn, and introduced various new and much cheaper models besides the fly, which were all made overseas. They even offered a few versions of acoustic guitars. So now most of the Parker Guitars line was made overseas and were just like any other guitar out there with bolt-on necks and regular frets. Nothing special whatsoever about them. Parker Guitars had become just a shade of what it once was. The Fly became the Max Fly, and Vernon Reed played a signature model for a while. They were trying to find ways to make the brand more profitable and sell more guitars, but in spite of all these efforts, it just didn't work. Now, I know this firsthand because I was there at the Parker Guitars Forum, and I remember this guy named Terry that worked there was asking questions you know, what our opinions would be if we did this or that to the headstock, and he would get our input. So anyways, maybe it was partly due to the effects of the Great Recession. Who knows? In 2016, the Illinois factory was shut down and Parker Guitars ceased to exist. Larry Fishman apparently bought the company back in 2021. Will Parker Guitars make a comeback someday? Time will tell. I still love everything about my five-pound Parker Fly. I will never part with it. It is a unique out-of-production guitar, but I completely disagree with the ridiculous current eBay asking prices that have more than doubled in the last few years for guitars that you can't even fix. If you do buy a Parker Fly, keep in mind that parts are generally not available for it. If anything goes wrong with the electronics in the pre-refined Fly, with the original electronics scheme, you're facing losing many of the functionalities such as the tone control on the piezo pickups, the master volume control on the stereo mono switch. It's possible to repair the circuit board, but that's way above most guitar tech's abilities. And it is a pain in the rear to do. You may also have problems with output matching the piezo and magnetic pickups, if you can even find a Fishman power chip to replace the original board. All the ribbon cabling would have to be replaced with individual wires, and so, basically, your electronics are completely different now. If the piezo element in the saddle goes bad, you're facing having a dead string because a replacement saddle for it is virtually non-existent. Flat springs can also be difficult to find, but not impossible. So, buyer beware. Two other things that you also need to know about the Parker Fly is that, one, it's virtually impossible to do any kind of modifications to it because of the way it's constructed, the way the electronics are done with the printed circuit board and the ribbon cable and all that stuff, and the control layout. I always felt like the fly needed a few more um, sounds as far as the magnetic pickups go, and I did find a way to do a coil tap switch, which I will link in the description below. And you'll you'll see how I was able to achieve that, but it was a big pain in the butt to do it. Um, the other thing you need to know, number two, is that you can't just stick any old pickup that you want to in a Parker Fly. In the case of the pre-refined Fly, it uses DiMarzio pickups, which have a certain spacing, and the 
refined flies, they had uh, used both DiMarzio pickups and Seymour Duncan pickups in the Mojo models and I think some of the other models. But Seymour Duncan pickups have a different pickup spacing than DiMarzio. So if you want to stick Seymour Duncan pickups into a DiMarzio equipped fly, you're looking at drilling new holes and putting new inserts for the screws. The method of attachment for the pickups to the body was by using two extra long pole pieces that screwed into the body, and this is how they were held in place. They don't use a pickup ring like conventional guitars use. So the other thing about the pickup is that unless you get a pickup that's specifically designed for Parker Fly, you have the problem of the conventional base plate on the bottom preventing you from being able to even get it into the body. So those are the two other things you need to be aware of if you do buy a fly. I hope you found this video interesting. I wanted to highlight this innovative and yet misunderstood guitar. Someday I may give up my rotary foam, but that day is not today. I'm still trying to make the leap to push buttons. And this is how I see guitars in today's world that insist on playing guitars that were designed now 70 or 75 years ago.